Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I'm Carol Robin King and I am sharing a complete tutorial today for free with all of the instructions. Uh, if you don't need the instructions and you just want to hurry it up, mute the sound and speed it up. I have got a little kitten that I want to do today. And I've got him drawn out on my paper. Little, I guess it's a Persian but without the smashy nose. I don't like the really, really smashy-nosed Persians. They didn't used to be that way, and they've sort of bred them um, down to where it's like they can't hardly breathe, poor things. So this is just a long-haired um, Persian-type cap. And we are going to tackle this. I'm going to put a little background on it so that you can see the cat, because he's kind of white. Uh, with green eyes and so I'm going to put some background on here that sort of looks like um, maybe some I don't know maybe some uh, bushes or trees or might go nice with those green eyes I'm putting water where I want it just so that I would rather the paint creep into it than to me try to put it harshly against an edge. We can use a little Mar uh, PH Martin's white, so that that's not going to be an issue. We can we can come back in with PH Martin's to put in color where as close as we want it, or to to put the hairs back wherever we want it. But right now, I just want to add some color so that when we do get this finished you can actually see the kitty cat's hair really well and we can do a little Payne's gray maybe down here and this is sap green let it creep in there and you can help it a little bit too. It doesn't have to be exact. Because like I said, we can come in with our brush and do things with the PH Martins. This is a little bit of uh, my favorite green actually probably is this Paraline Green. So I'm adding a little bit of that for darkness. And maybe up here a little bit of Kind of a yellowish. That was a bit much of a yellowish, wasn't it? But that's easily fixed. It is water color, which means you can get rid of as much color as you want with a little bit of water. As long as you have good paper. Good paper is the key. Well, that turned out kind of cool. My bottle is sort of dripping all over, but I kind of like it. We'll just say that that was on purpose, okay? Just don't tell anybody. Okay. I think we could drop... Okay, we're going to say that side is done. Let's move on over to the rest of it. I forgot to pre-wet it, but that's okay. Because I'm really just using a very light green right here. 
Oops. Forgot that's where the cat ends. Put a little of that yellow over here too. Just to make sure it looks like it's part of the same image. I think maybe we should neutralize some of this a little bit. How about a little neutral color in there just to maybe not have it all be quite so bright. I don't know that I like all of the blossoms that were happening. Okay, a little bit of spritzing. We can always wash over it and neutralize it if we think it's too bright, which it probably is, but um, remember it's going to dry considerably lighter, so it may turn out being just fine. That's why I don't want to mess with it right now, because I, I may actually like it when it's dry. And there's no point in scrubbing on something and whatnot if it's going to be okay or changing the color too much. I'm getting these little dots that I splattered in here on my white kitty so it doesn't look like he's got green freckles. Okay. While that background dries, I'm going to start on the eyes. I like to do the eyes first because with an animal or a person, really, if you don't get the eyes right, boy, you, you're going to be in trouble because it's, there's just no point in going on if the eyes are all wrong. It's particularly, I do most pet portraits with, uh, I do all my pet portraits actually with acrylics. So I always, I paint my background or not the background, but the background of the dog, so the underwash. And then I'll do the eyes right away, because I've got to make sure that those eyes are right. Of course, with acrylics, the nice thing is if you mess up, you can sort of go back and fix it. It's not the end of the world. Like with watercolors, it's a bit of a different story. If you mess it up too bad, it's pretty hard to go back and fix it. Now these eyes have some, what I think is almost a little bit of white, but also a little bit, that's, that was not the color I thought I picked up. I guess maybe it is. Uh, yellow ochre is what I was thought I was picking up. That's just a really bright ochre. But there's usually some little lines of yellow in these, these green eyes. Little bits like that. So we'll just let that sort of float around and move and see what it does when it's done. Okay, that has to dry before I can do the rest of it. So how about the nose next? Let's see here. It's not really going to be red. What is that color? Let's see, magenta with a little Windsor is probably going to wind up being a bit of a mix because that magenta is way too pinky pinky. I think if I add a little Windsor to it, we may get the right color here.
That was burnt sienna. So that it's not too terribly pinky. And we'll let that dry for a bit also. A little bit darker down here. A little burnt umber maybe or even maybe a little Van Dyke brown. I don't know. Maybe even a little neutral. That might be the trick right there. Neutral tint is a wonderful thing. I've newly discovered that. It just sort of it can darken colors wonderfully, but it also can take a color and just literally neutralize it, which I guess is where it got its name. I'm going to spritz this background a little more before it completely dries, just to give the little bit of uh, texture of the bushes, you know. May have to soften up those hair edges a little bit when I start painting the cap. It would seem a little bit stark to me. I like the color of the eyes though. I think that's coming out nicely. Let's see if we can get some underwash of color. And I'm trying to figure out this is a unique colored cap. Well, I mean he's white, but it's just the shades if you don't you have to get those shades right for the shadows it's never just black and white you know what I mean it's always got a little something in it that's kind of nice that's got a little tiny bit of burnt sienna with some neutral tint and a tiny bit of raw sienna I kind of like that. This is my shadows around his whiskers. They're not exact. He's just sort of trying to put in a little bit of a idea of some shadows. We can always add more later, but we're just getting the main shadows down. Can soften some of the edges if you want so they're not so sharp. And that's okay. You do want to put a little bit of green shadow in there in your shadows sometimes because of the reflection of the bushes around. So that um, that's what happens in, in real life. If you start to get a few cauliflowers, you can wipe them out at this stage before it uh, dries. Let's see here. I'm just trying to get in these shadows. I gotta mix a little more of that color. Neutral tint. What was it I said? Uh -oh. Burnt sienna and raw sienna together.
there's going to be variations every time you remix this and that's all right it doesn't have to be perfect that one's a little bit too reddish so i'm going to neutralize that a little bit more it's a hair more reddish but not terribly that's a nice dark one Okay, you can use your fingers sometimes to uh, put a little, pull, it sort of pulls on it a little bit, gives it a ragged edge, which is kind of nice. Doing a little bit of the work for you there. going to be pink in there. This needs to be a lot lighter right now. Ever the slightest bit of color. watering it down a little bit just to make sure that this is a lighter You just keep working at it, putting in your shadows. You can take any cat picture and uh, do this with it. Uh, the, the basic concept is the same, just your hairs are in different places, you know. But uh, take your favorite cat picture and just follow this basic technique to try to do the same do justice to your own picture you're not trying to get every hair we're just giving the the idea that there's a whole lot of hair and it's fluffy Here we're just going to do a little more shadow than, than not. Since I've got white around all the other edges, I'm trying not to go all the way to the edge with the, with the hair. painted it on lightly and then I came back in with some water to disperse it a little better. We can do a big wash over everything later on as well as just right now we're sort of laying in our basic shadows so that you can see the shape of the face the cat and kind of where the where the main the main shape and the main shadows are, are going to be my stomach's growling i hope you can't hear that <laughs> <laughs> 
It's really loud. Okay, let's see. We'll get some some of that nice little color that we had in the nose for our eyes. I'm scrubbing a little bit of that edge that got a little too green. And we can fix that with some PH Martin's white. But uh, I just want to get that majority of that out of there right now before I try to put pink in it. And these edges I'm just going to soften a little bit um, because the the color ran into to it and made some sort of sharp lines which you may like and you can leave that for sure if you like it. I'm just going to soften them up just a little bit. Now back to our magenta with a little red. Let's get that color in here. A little more red. It's a little too red. Got ears are bleeding. I don't want it to look like he's got a bloody ear. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna tones that down a bit. Let the color run. And we can soften this up here where it should be lighter. Just by picking up a little bit of your color. Remember that's going to lighten considerably as it dries. A little burnt sienna. I'm going to just pick up a little. I don't want it running down and I don't want a really stark edge either. Just using my paper towel to sort of dry it a bit so that it doesn't leave a stark edge there. But we did need a little bit of pink in those ears. So while that's drying, our eyes are dry enough to come back. I've got my little you know these brushes I wish they would decide what size is what this this is a triple zero um, this one is a two but they're clearly about the same size um, this one is a says it's a six round but I have other rounds that are like a three and they're this big so I, I don't know I I hate to tell you the size because it's just not gonna make any sense this is a number two rigger, but I have seen riggers that are numbered quite differently. So sometimes you just got to go by what you see in my hand and compare it to the size of what it looks like. This is neutral tint that I'm using as my black. Don't like using black in watercolor. Actually, I don't really like it in my acrylics either. I usually will mix a couple of things rather than use black. And uh, with watercolors, burnt sienna with paints gray makes a very dark, almost black uh, color. And I think you can do the same thing with like a burnt umber or Van Dyke brown and, uh, and also either a paints gray or a neutral tint used very liberally. I prefer to use other things besides black. I don't think there's actual black in nature anyway. It's like just a lot of colors mixed together to make a dark color just like gray is a lot of colors together.
I usually do not like doing animals in watercolor because I find it unforgiving if you make a mistake. But I decided I would try to do this little cat. So we'll see what happens. In a minute, we'll come back and we'll do a little blending around the edges, but I've got to let this dry first. When we blend it in, it's going to like create the shadows of the eye coming inwards. And we can add a little gray into certain areas of the eye as well. So let's see if we can get our little nose outlined. color I'm using is just a very dark version of the what I used for the shadows. So it's the uh, neutral tint with a little burnt sienna and a tiny bit of raw sienna. I just mixed it really dark with heavy neutral tint to create this darker color here. This is going to dry a lot lighter, but I'm going to go ahead and put this darkness here so that we can begin to see the shape of his facial features. I think having the background green was a good idea. It really pulls the green out of his eyes. That might have been a happy accident. Create some shadows in the ears just a little bit. My brush is probably too small for this, but that's what I had in my hand, so. Now we will go into our, this is a half, or no, it's a 3 8 inch, um, what do they call that? It's taper, it's another word for tapered, I can't remember right now. Anyway, uh, angled, so, but it's really worn out, and I love it. Um, you could do this on purpose to a brush with a little sandpaper, but it's really nice for dry brush and for doing things like hair whenever you can get it real real beat up like that it'll kind of do your hair work for you so 
especially if you come in dry brush with it. That didn't have quite enough color. Let's see if I can make it show you a little better out here. It's almost dry, but not quite. It just gives the semblance of hair. And you, you want two or three shadow colors whenever you're doing, trying to give hair. You can't just do your, your underwash. You got to come in with a couple more colors to give it levels of depth and uh, this brush is great for coming in with that middle level where you want to start seeing a little shape of hair Put a good color down here. I think I need a little more intense shadow right in here. That gives you that hair texture. I'm just lightly touching it. It's it's almost completely dry. If I come over here, out like I got, I don't even anything on there now. So I have to re-wet my brush. You can test it on a sheet of paper and make sure that it's doing what you want before you come to your painting. That's why I try to keep a little sheet of paper right there. It's very very convenient for making sure that you've got the right color on or that your brush like especially if you're trying to do dry brush you want to check and make sure that it's at the dry the right dryness because if it's too wet it's going to make very distinct lines and for dry brush it's the it's the whole um, very very light touch I like it for portraits because it almost gives the sense of pores on a watercolor portrait of a person. You can get the sense of skin pores actually with this dry brush technique by going in several different colors. I did that on a portrait of my parents many, many years ago and it um, you can almost reach out and touch my dad's face. You don't have to add more. You can stop right now after we finish outlining the eyes and you could, you know, add some ha white hair to it and be done. You don't have to keep going. Uh, so you can, once you get the basic shapes and you can kind of stop at any point and say, okay, that's it. I'm done. Now let's go in here and I'll show you how I, bring in the shadows around the eyes. Oops, I got green on that brush. Didn't do that. Thought it was a clean brush. I'm just going to wet this right here and draw in a little of that edge color. I didn't want to do it while it was wet because I was afraid it would draw in too much. 
up top we will add a little bit of uh, let's say Payne's gray for the upper shadow to make this eye look round a little bit of shadow in the middle maybe add just a hair more green to make sure that it's obvious these are green eyes and up top I'm going to add a little of that neutral tint and soften up the edges of those eye lines Didn't want to lose all my light green that I had going on there, which was kind of nice. Same thing over here. I'm going to just soften up those edges a little bit. You can take your uh, paper towel and just dry off if you think it's creeping a little too much into your light color. And we will put a little shadow at the top here as well. Ooh, that's got a fly in here that's nasty. I have to go chase him out. Find my little swatter. Now there is a certain amount of shadow around the eye. We can do that with a little bit of neutral along with our regular color here. And I'm going to soften it with water. If you feel it's too much, you can pull it back. never a perfect straight line so I'm going back and just adding a little bit of texture there so you can tell that there's hair along the top of that eye it's not a perfect flat line
We'll put a little shadow on this nose here. Yeah, a little bit of shadow in these ears where their hair is. There's going to be white hair coming out. But I want to have a little bit of dark in there also. It will make the white hair stand out. And this sort of gives a extra little extra bonus whatever to the eye yeah let's see if we can I really don't like the way those edges turned out same here right here where his mouth is and the nostrils I think I need to deepen my shadows under the face a little bit. That might be too dark. That's better. And this would be a third layer of a different color, which again just makes it look much more natural and it gives it depth. Plus we're going to come in here with white, so that'll give it a fourth layer. Make that one a little bit lighter. Again, this is dry brush, barely any color on there. Now we're going to get some of this pH white. Bleed proof Martin's pH white. Let's see, we'll put some on the lid, I guess, again. Stuff will last a long time unless you're pouring it. A lot of people pour it into their, uh, kind of pour it in their paintings uh, to give. It really does give some interesting, interesting uh, effects. Let's see. 
if you pour it into some color while you're working on it. Now I'm doing this so that the white isn't just on the whiskers or up around the edges. So I'm adding some of this pH white to other areas so that it sort of ties it together. This bright white paper is never really all that bright white. If you put it next to your pH Martins, you're like, oh, that's, that's a different white. <laughs> Didn't like that. Let's see if we can get some little reflections in the eye there. makes a big difference when you add these reflections in. Let's see here. This edge of this ear Something better. Now let's get some of these uh, wonderful long whiskers in. Those are a lot of fun to do. Actually, you need to be able to see them. A little more paint on that brush. is a very light touch practice on something it's good to have a like if I had painted some dark here if I wasn't comfortable doing whiskers I would have painted a dark section so that I could practice on it with my whiskers and make, get the feel of it once your wrist gets the feel of it you're golden and you can just do it over and over but you do have to sort of teach your wrist the movement Remember, they don't all run the same direction, so change it up a bit. I'm 
And there's a couple this direction. I try to always go out with my whiskers unless I'm really, really comfortable with my brush, which actually I am, but I usually try to go out because it does make it the end narrower and sort of disappear a little bit. So the hair, the, the paint disappears to an end, which gives you the feeling of that point. Your pH white does have to be watered down for this. It will not work otherwise. It's just too, uh, too th it's pretty thick. You can do quite a few hairs though with one pickup of paint, which is nice. A lot of little hair things going on in the inner ear. little highlight under that eye just to make it stand out a little bit I might have to add a little shadow under the chin. I think it's too white there. I think I better do that before I try to paint this white whiskers on there. I think it's too light down here. Whoa. It's a little dark. Forgot about those little whisker things that the areas that hold the whiskers that kind of appeared quite dark. I think that's too dark, but I'll come water it down in a minute. Go over that with a little water.
better represents the shape. I can't see these whiskers, so I'm going to darken this whole area a little bit so that we can see these whiskers. And just more of a wash so that it's not uh, affecting any particular area more than another area. But I need to be able to see my whiskers. If you work at it very much when you do a wash, you will wipe out your texture that you put in before. So make sure if you're doing a wash that you don't mess with it too much. You paint over it and then let it dry. So I'm going to let it dry for a bit and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I think that's dry enough. Let's get the rest of these little highlights and whiskers done. I want this light on his eye to be considerably lighter than it is right now. I should do it. I think those are much more visible this time.
There are a couple of dark hairs in here. So we're going to add those. Actually going to use a different brush just do a little dry brushing on the eye to make it look a little more realistic Let's see if I can zoom in and let you see a little better I'm gonna take this round it's pretty dry right now I'm just going to pick up a couple of things. This is yellow ochre. Just going to dry brush ever the slightest touch of that. Down here near the bottom. Clean off my brush, but while I'm dry on just on a damp paper towel, I didn't want to risk getting it wet because then I can't dry brush. Dry brush a little more green on his eyes. of shade. I just want to soften the edges of the shade that I made so it doesn't look like it's a harsh line. And add a little more shadow. I'm calling it shade. I mean shadow. Right in this area. You can actually use a little bit of this white also to create some lighter, lighter areas. Or maybe the, there's a little reflection light, but it's not really quite like a highlight. And soften that so that it's not harsh. I think that makes them look a little bit more realistic. I don't like the starkness of this, so it's I the not starkness. I don't like the harshness of this line against the nose, so I am going to soften that. And just sort of blend it a little bit. Looks like I have a little white on my brush. Let's see, where's my scrubber? It's probably going to work better. And then we can 
put a little color back in if we want. Soften that by blending it a little bit. I think those look fairly realistic. I'm going to add a little bit of green right there. Against the highlight that I added. Need some shadows on here to send this back a bit. It's just too too um, bright right there, which makes makes it not look as natural. When you add a little bit of shadow to an area, it sort of sends it back. So it doesn't appear to be quite so forward in that section. And I'm just using a little bit of um, neutral tone to do that. did notice that there's no definition under his um, little cheek right here. At least not enough definition, so I'm adding a little bit of definition to that as well. I think that's better. Where's my keep looking back at my computer because I, I can't. I'm sitting in front of it. I can't tilt this because then you won't see it right. So I have to look back at my computer screen <laughs> to actually see the, uh, the painting and make sure it looks right because I'm at an angle sitting in front of it with it laying down. So it's hard to tell whether it looks right or not. Nice thing about these whiskers when you put them on with this... Uh, 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 bleed proof white is that uh, you can actually paint over them very lightly once or twice and not completely lose them. So if you had to add just a little bit of shadow somewhere it works. It lets you do that. I I think we're just about done. Okay. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed painting that. I hope you give it a shot. And, um, you know, or use the same techniques and just take your, 
your cat, your favorite cat, your favorite cat picture, your own cat, neighbor's cat, whatever. <laughs> and uh, just have fun painting your cat. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you want to get more of these. But even if you don't subscribe, if you like and share, it does kind of help get out there more so that more people can enjoy my videos. And I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week, and keep on painting.